come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you are ready for it or not. All you got to do is please do us a favor, go over to wherever you found us and hit that like, subscribe, or uh, the notification button whenever we make new episodes. You'll get notified. All of this stuff helps us get uh, found through those internet algorithms, and we become the fastest growing podcast in the universe. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. <laughs> Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin, and tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin! <laughs> <laughs> what did we watch tonight? <laughs> Very true. Uh, tonight we watched a movie called The Beast Must Die. And must it, Colin? Must it die? It must die. Especially, you have to have a moment where a character actually says, Tonight... The beast must die in I your mean, movie. Would, why, would, why must yeah. the beast die? Well, because, I mean, it's the most dangerous game, right? Well, this is a movie it's just, from... It's uh, just a dog in a shaggy coat. <laughs> 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 I love the costume in this. We're going to get into it. This is a movie from 1974, and it's directed by a chap by the name of uh, Paul Annett. It's not so often we get a chap directing a chap. these movies. Right. I looked him up to see if he'd done anything that we would have heard of. Uh, apparently, he is mostly a television director, British TV shows. So, uh, what's, what's his name? Paul Annett. Paul yeah, Annett. he's not the name. He's not the name we're coming after in this. We got uh, Amicus Cushing. Um, hell, even uh, was uh, what's his name? A name at any point? Um, Michael Gambon. Yeah, when he was younger. Yeah. And Charles Gray from uh, Rocky Horror and Diamonds Are Forever. Actually, I think Charles yep. Gray was in two James Bond movies. Like he was Blofeld, right, in Diamonds right. Are Forever, the criminologist in Rocky Horror Picture Show, and he was also, I think, in You Only Live Twice as a different That's character. That's funny because this movie feels like what a Bond villain does in his off time. Right. Yeah, when he's not fighting Bond, this is what he'd be doing. Did you get that vibe? Is there like a heavy Bond influence on this movie? Feels like it to me. Yeah, this is kind of how I, I, it felt like to me. Um, the movie is about it's a werewolf movie. Is it a werewolf movie? Is it fair <laughs> to call it a werewolf movie? No. Loose, loosely, we'll call it a loose werewolf movie. <laughs> no, this is not a werewolf movie. Well, it's more like Clue. Yeah. yeah, there yeah. just happens to be a werewolf like in the riddle somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's a very odd. Um, I mean, it, it markets itself as a werewolf movie. It's actually kind of interesting if you have seen the poster for this movie in the course of your life. It has a big, uh, you know, like a moon that with is, a werewolf. In oh yeah, it. but that, that is a somewhat misleading poster. Yes, it is because <laughs> this werewolf those look like very human eyes going. I think it's a bad uh, poster, even. It's just it looks bad. like it looks like that meme. I don't know what the puppet is, but it's that puppet meme where it's like we side eyeing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> Well, I have actually, uh, I've seen, well, the, the actual poster had, uh, this is the, the Blu-ray cover we're looking at. The actual poster had all the stars, you know, like below it. And it was like, which one of these famous people is the werewolf? That's the gimmick. Uh, this werewolf in the poster image is actually, that's the guy from The Boy Who Cried Werewolf, which is a movie I think it came out either in 73 or 74 right around the time of this release. That's what he looked like. So they just took the picture oh, from a so different movie. So they're lying movie. to us further about this movie? Yes. They're putting a different werewolf on the cover. Wow. Yes. This movie is full of lies. Bait and switch. Um, okay, so the movie is... Uh, uh, the story of it is basically that this um, wealthy hunter... So this is a mix between like the most dangerous game and Ten Little Indians, right? Yeah, we need to talk about the intro to this movie because when this movie started... I was very confused about what we were going to watch because it very much felt like the most dangerous game. And the fact that it was a young black man 
made me really <laughs> nervous. I was like, Colin, are you not reading the tone of the world right now? This is a terrible pick. And then he ended up, and then he ended up being the millionaire. I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah, Colin's <laughs> going to just blow our minds and go completely the opposite direction. Yeah, he's chosen right. now to do it. But in the beginning, when he gets shot in the back by yeah. like, a group of people, as he's walking away, I was like, oh, this is... I know. Oh, so it's you actually thought that that was prescient. what was? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. I've seen this a like, hundred times. So well, yeah, <laughs> because as soon as he showed up on the white people's lawn, I'm like, oh shit, this is yeah. not gonna go good. This is like get out. Yeah, and then he gets shot in the back. Oh, God. Okay, well, we should I was set so, this up for. I was so relieved when, it came, when I figured out what was I happening. Just, I was just so watching relieved. it, going, "Where's the werewolf?" This is not what I signed up for. All right. Well, actually, the 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 movie, uh, the very beginning of the movie, is a crawl that basically says that the the that while you're watching this movie, you are the detective. This is not a who done it, you know, or whatever to find out who is the murderer, but who is the werewolf. And it says that basically you're going to have to put your powers of deduction to the test. And at some point, there's going to be a werewolf break in the movie where you will get to choose or decide and guess which one of the suspects is the werewolf. This is a pretty good setup. (laughs) It's a good setup. good setup. setup. The the crawl lies. It's basically telling us, like, we promise there's a werewolf in this movie. We guarantee (laughs) there's a werewolf later on in this movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I really like, I mean, we'll talk about it more, but I was really excited for that premise. Like, you, viewer, you're going to have to figure it out. I, I was kind of hoping it would be more interactive than just like a pause mm. for you to figure it out. But like, they take moments as, and just stop and be like, do you, like Dora the Explorer, do you know who the one Yeah, I was hoping there'd be more of that. Like, hey. <laughs> This is We're 30 uh, minutes in. How you feel? <laughs> you wanted a little bit of Bandersnatch oh, God, action sure. the, uh, with that, that interactive Netflix uh, uh, thing. Bandersnatch, isn't that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, Black yeah. Mirror. Um, it's also annoying to call it a werewolf movie when there's no transformation scene. Yeah. There was at the end. There's transformation of hand and it, eye, it, maybe. Mm, and the lap is all. The transformation. The detransformation, yeah. 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 But, like, that's. That's one of the hallmarks of a werewolf movie is like you're building up to that point where the tension finally breaks and you see the person like succumb to the beast and like that does not happen in this movie. No, when they're going after the dog, I'm going to say, because let's not lie to our audience here. (laughs) uh, I'm like, is this is this it? Is this or is this some like distraction? Is this the wolf they're going after? I didn't believe it was. I thought we were going to get a werewolf. The werewolf in the movie is played by a very um, happy, playful German shepherd, which is apparently, <laughs> I mean, tongue wagging the whole time. It's painted yeah. black, and then it was wearing like a werewolf costume. Yeah, yeah. It has like so, a like a like a mane extension on almost. Yeah, yes. you know, like you know, like in cartoons when like John like, Snow. It's like in cartoons when a wolf is wearing a sheep costume. It was like that. It was exactly <laughs> yeah. like that. <laughs> Basically, yeah, this is uh, operating on a budget. I don't even know, but it had to be like a couple hundred thousand dollars. This is um, Amicus Films. Sean talked about earlier, brought us this movie. They were an English um, studio that was kind of a contemporary of Hammer Films, right? But um, Amicus was run by these two American guys. This is uh, Max Rosenberg and Milton Sabatsky. We, we've them. talked about Amicus. We we watched a couple other Amicus movies, didn't we? We watched was it um was Black Sabbath one? No, um, what, that was. What, what did we watch? We Devil's watched. Rain? Nope. We watched. Uh, well, you got to think British. It's all going to be British. Uh, so yeah. it's uh, from Beyond the Grave, which also okay. starred Peter Cushing, and yeah, yeah. Uh, we watched Tales from the Crypt, and that right. also starred Peter Cushing. I think that's right. the only two Amicus movies was that we've done. High? not amicus no they were gone by then this was actually at the very end of their run mostly amicus was known for doing these uh omnibus horror movies the anthology horror movies Mm -hmm. so a lot of their stuff from beyond the grave the house that dripped blood asylum tales from the crypt vault of horror you know they were all multiple stories um in a movie they did do a couple feature length things this is one of them um, like the skull, and I think they did like the land that time forgot, the people that time forgot, and the whatever the other one is. There's like three of those. Um, but this was, I think, toward the end of their reign, and then I think they went bankrupt or whatever. Um, shortly there, or you know, ran out of funding or whatever. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just Challenge. weird that it's a it's an English company with like American backers, one of whom lived in England and one of them who was in New York. Colin, um, you mentioned uh, Peter Cushing a lot. Where are we on the Peter Cushing Sylvester Sloan scale? Okay, we well, gotta be up there. He's we gotta, gotta be close. Well, I thought. All right, I haven't actually looked at and consulted if, the and, wall. But we I thought take we were the over at under five. odds on if any of us brought a Peter Cushing movie to the Greek show. Uh, you did not. It looks like I've brought them all. No, actually, Travis brought. I think two uh, of them. Okay, so this is this is the fifth appearance of Peter Cushing on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Do you know the other four movies that we did that he's in, and I named two of them? Dracula seventy two. Yep. <coughs> from from the. The great the grave one you mentioned. Yep, from beyond the grave. From beyond the grave. Yep. House by the cemetery. Nope. But we did tales nope. from the crypt. And the other one, okay. if you missed this one, you should go back. The legend of the seven golden vampires. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we didn't do house by the cemetery. No, that's a Lucio Fulci movie. But With there's Peter Cushing. No, he's not in that. What's the one he's in? House of the Drip Blood, I think, is he in that one? He might be. He's in that one, but no. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, Peter Cushing got famous mostly through the Hammer films, but he also worked for Amicus, and so he just became, you know, like this huge star of uh, British horror cinema. But he was also you know, famous for, um, what's that? I said, and you know, Star Wars and whatnot. And Star Wars. Well, eventually Star Wars, but prior to, because that's where everybody, you know, when you, when you say Peter Cushing... He's Grand Moff Tarkin, right? I mean, I've met people who had no idea that he was like this, you know, big horror star prior to that. He got cast in Star Wars, obviously, because of George Lucas's uh, love of the Dracula and Frankenstein movies that Hammer did. But he was also, for a period of time, I think he was uh, Sherlock Holmes. He was one of the famous Sherlock Holmes on BBC. He played Doctor Who once, I think, in a movie. I think it was Doctor Who and and the Daleks. So, yeah, he, he gets around this guy. But then he cemented his, you know, Star Wars and, like, then he could basically, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All and, that. And, and he was like, in a you movie. You know, I've done some other work. Wasn't he in a movie, like, uh, just a couple of years ago? He was in Rogue One. You know, <laughs> like, even yeah, though he was dead going. 20 years, he's still going. <laughs> yeah. Um all right, so the, uh, I mean, I guess you kind of have to talk a little bit about uh, Agatha Christie and the influence here, right? Have any, are any of you guys familiar with Ten Little Indians or, uh, and then there were none? Yeah. Uh, I've seen them both. I worked at Barnes & uh, Noble a long time, so. I haven't read, <laughs> I didn't read any of the earlier stuff, but I saw the movies. Well, it turns out that the movie has been, uh, that story has been adapted for the screen. Let's see. It was 1945, 1965, 1974, the same year that this came out, 1987, 1989, and 2015 for the BBC. And that's considered, I think the last one with Charles Dance is considered to be the most accurate to the story. Although Agatha Christie wrote the novel um, and the play, but when she wrote the play, she changed the ending somehow. So depending on what you see, it's got like a different, uh, you know, who did it. But hmm. the specifically, the one in 1965 had, and get ready for it, the whodunit break, where it stopped halfway through the movie and gave you the option of like, you know, did you follow the clues? Who is the murderer? And you got to make your, your guess. So this movie, Beast Must Die, is basically... In structure, ten little Indians. Right, we're gonna get a bunch of people on a, in a in a manor house, and one of them is the suspect, and you have to figure out who did it. Even though this is uh, based on a short story called "There Shall Be No Darkness" by a guy named James Blish. That so sounds there you go. menacing. Mm-hmm. Um, would it come as any surprise? Do you find folks to find out that the werewolf break was uh, not a part of the plan of this movie and was put in after the fact by the producers? That's shocking. <laughs> Why so? <laughs> uh, I think they didn't have a whole lot of confidence in the movie. And so they said, here's so what we're going to do to, <laughs> as an exploitation. It makes you pay attention to the movie. Like, as soon as I say that, you're like, all right, I'm going to find out who this motherfucker is. <laughs> yeah, my first thought watching this was like, I need to pay attention not only to the story, but to like 
that what the camera's showing and what it's not showing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I thought I had it pegged, god damn it. <laughs> well, we're watching him. I'm pretty proud of of my correct predictions. So. Okay, so I, I liked like, that it was that. Well, wait, before we go, okay, so we are going to spoil this movie. Just uh, so you are aware, listener, spoilers ahead. We are going to tell you who the werewolf is <laughs> in this. So you're saying, Michaela, you had it nailed. You knew who who it was. Yeah, before long before we got to the werewolf break, I said, I said, I think it's this person, but I also want it to be that person. And because, like, when the movie started, I was like, well, who would be the most interesting for it to be? And I thought Caroline, the, the black woman and the wife of his wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so, because she he yeah. had the ring, although he never called her his wife. But I right. think, yeah, but they, but they also referred to her as the hostess of the party, too. So if she's if they're not married, they're together. She's well, right. somebody his, somebody yeah. said once his wife oh, like, okay. called her his wife one time, I think. Pretty sure. I was like, this would be the most interesting person for it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, So once I decided that that's what I wanted to be, I was watching her more than I was watching everybody else to see how they integrated her into the story. Right. I see. I eliminated her when she ran into the quote unquote werewolves in the barn. And then I was like, oh, it can't be her. See, that was the, I, I, I was right that it was Carolyn and I was right that there was two. Uh, those were my two guesses because, like, all right, I guarantee there's, there's gonna always be two. two. I hate there's it. always two. I was always so mad two. when that happened. I like, I was. If I had seen this in a theater, I would have stormed out at that point. Like, <laughs> because, going to watch this, you're like, there's another gator in the lake. God damn it, it. We talk. We talk about this anytime we do a monster movie. Like, this is. I'm so tired of seeing this ending. I'm just so <laughs> tired of it. Okay, okay, but what if they go to three? How do you feel about that? <laughs> what if there's a, what if there's no, a third monster like, that comes out? That's it needs the baby. to be like a whole like group of them then. It needs to okay, be so like that's, you just so see the Godzilla and ending. They're everywhere. Yeah, you know? Godzilla yeah. did that, right? Where they had the all the eggs hatched or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's either just one or it's a whole bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Was there a movie that ended like that with all the eyes coming alive in the woods? That I, seems so familiar. Yeah, that that sounds familiar. Mm. I actually think like Boggy Creek 2 ends similarly to that. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. A whole bunch of Sasquatches. Yeah. Yeah. Sasquai. Sasquatch. 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 Yeah. Well, it does kind of. I mean, that was Sasquatching. I, I guess what you were Sus- saying. Sasquatching people. Sorry, Colin. We're just gonna keep going with this. <laughs> well, what you were saying about like it, it, it forces you to, you know, to pay attention to the movie or to be more engaged. I thought that yep. was actually because I'm like, it, you know, without that, the movie isn't terribly exceptional. You know, it's kind of a run of the mill, uh, you know, mystery movie, except we're like, hey, we got a werewolf, but it's, you know, a dog in a if suit. It, right. <laughs> if it weren't for uh, the main actor, Lockhart, what's his name? Calvin Lockhart. Yeah. Calvin Lockhart is the greatest actor <laughs> of his or any generation. Well, I love this man. You've probably seen him before. Uh, you probably haven't seen the movie that made him famous, which was uh, or got him some kind of notoriety. It was uh, Cotton. Cotton comes to Harlem, I think, and uh, that was in nope. the sixties or something. But you may remember him as King Willie, the head of the Voodoo Posse, in a movie called Predator Two, because he uh, had that voice. Oh God, <laughs> the Dread Man, nice, True okay. Dread, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was also in David Lynch's Wild at Heart uh, in his uh, later years. I'm not sure if he's still alive or still working, but uh, he has a presence. He was born in Jamaica uh, to American parents, um, I think, or maybe they were British. I'm not sure. It sounds like he has a British. I was going to say, where'd the British accent come from then? Yeah. Yeah. So um, he was not actually the first choice for the movie, I guess, while they were putting it together. Uh, I heard, according to the IMDb, it says that um, Robert Shaw was interested in playing the lead in the movie, which I find hard to believe, but it said that he was on a, a career downturn at that time and was looking to pay some bills. I'm like, what? But uh, the more... That would be a wildly different movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the more accepted notion is that uh, Robert Quarry, who had been... I don't know if you've seen a, if you, the Count Yorga vampire <laughs> movies. Yeah. He was in Sugar Hill... Uh, he was the bad guy in that, and he was in the uh, Dr. Fibes Returns. I mean, he was kind of the, I think they thought that Robert Corey was going to be like the replacement to Vincent Price or something as a uh, uh, horror star in the late, uh, middle to late 70s. So he was going to be in this, but 
only two years, I think, prior to when they started shooting this, Shaft had become a big success. And this started a wave of black exploitation movies. And not to miss an exploitation genre, Amicus said, we're going to cast a black lead. And so there's no like real acknowledgement of this in the, the dialogue, really. I mean, it's like anybody could play this part. But they got Calvin Lockhart, who brings like this, you know, uh, great energy to the uh, to the role of uh, mm-hmm. Tom Newcliffe, multi-millionaire. I don't know what does this guy do. I mean, I know he's a hunter. What does he do professionally? Do we know? A Bond villain. Yeah. <laughs> well, why do you say that? What do you mean? He uh, just the the outfits. Let's put it that way. This is a very well dressed man. Like he's 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 fashionable in the scenes that he's in. He's wearing a little uh, a nice little sports jacket later. He's got a full leather like suit, oh, the PVC uh, a leather suit? body suit for hunting. Yeah, he's got. He's a well dressed man. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a cat suit, but for guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a leather jumpsuit. Yeah. Can't be comfortable. Uh, it doesn't look like it is. But no. Yeah. Um, nice shiny leather suit. Um, so the beginning of this movie, I guess that's what we're talking about, the prologue, right, where, where you guys didn't know what kind of movie you were getting into, shows a, we see him running through the woods, right, of this, um, see, I'm trying to still, I'm still trying to figure out if this is an island, because that opening shot, which is under the, the credits, we do come in from the water, the only reason I asked this and became kind of obsessed with this idea is because, like, if it's not an island, then how come nobody fucking leaves, right? At some point, like, I'm getting out of here. This guy's hunting a werewolf. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm leaving. Dude did try to leave. He got in his car and tried to get the heck out of I there. I get that he's got an he electrified fence down. around the perimeter of the, the grounds or whatever. IMDB yeah. says it's an island estate. Okay. Yeah. Well, it feels like an island estate. That's the only thing that I can say makes any kind of sense as to why people aren't fleeing because they've got nowhere to go. They got to wait for a ferry or something, right? Which tracks with the the most dangerous game like template. Right, right. <laughs> the beginning of the movie does feel like the most dangerous game as we're seeing this guy running and he's being hunted down by. Uh, it looks like the military. They're in choppers. They're on the ground. Uh, they're being guided by this German guy in a uh, looking at a bunch of monitors somewhere. Uh, he's telling them where to move because he's got cameras rigged up in all the trees on this uh, this area and microphones in the ground. Microphones, we are later told, <laughs> can detect it's a, a human cable. footstep up to a mile away. Liars. That's amazing. That's uh, amazing. But why do you need, like, because the map showed, like, 30 of them. Why do you need that many <laughs> if they can detect up to a mile away? Like, how how far do you need these to detect? I'm assuming Mic- those are my, they're every mile. Microphones that detect a footstep up to a mile away, yet we can't get a fucking headphone mic that <laughs> will have you come clearly on a phone call? Jesus. <laughs> We've gone down in technology. I know. It was the 70s, man. They had everything in the 70s. They, they had, had cameras everything. The, the what growing did we trees. do? Was it just, did drugs, like, derail it all? Like, we were on pace to go way beyond our human potential, and then just drugs came in and fucked everything up for, like, four decades? So there's a separate timeline of, like, right in the 60s where we branch off where drugs didn't take over everything? Right. No drugs, no free love, and we, boy, we went, we're in on Mars and beyond right now. That's what I think. And there's flying cars. I was promised yes, flying cars. That's how God we got the flying cars. Yeah. Yes. Um... Well, anyway, we don't know who the protagonist is at this point. We're just seeing this guy getting hunted through the uh, woods. And then a couple of times, like, I mean, because I'm reading it. I've seen it before. You know, the guy comes up to him and is like, bang, you know, and uh, he's like, not until you sh- fire that, sh- pull the trigger, boy. And so the guy fires, but it's empty. And it's like, well, because this is his private army or whatever. He's got out hunting him. He's putting, it turns out that he's putting a uh, security system to the test. But we don't know the head at the beginning. And it looks, <laughs> yeah. through 2020 optics, it looks bad. <laughs> it looks bad <laughs> for you. <laughs> bad for you, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my freak show compatriots were going to, you know, yeah, turn the table. Like, what the hell are you doing? Now I got to spring I was, something. I was He's like my favorite genre. <laughs> yeah. In our, in our group chat, I was literally about to be like, Colin, what the fuck? And then the character started laughing. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Yeah, because he, he comes onto the, it looks like he, he they chase him onto the ground of this estate where all these people are having tea, as you do in England. You have tea and scones or whatever. Sure. And he walks in there and they uh, all these guys open fire and, and kill him. 
and then they disperse. And of course, the guests come running over and ha ha. He's just this is how you make an entrance when you're an eccentric millionaire. <laughs> Tom Nuclear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, so basically, his idea is right. And this is the whole thing upon which the movie functions is that he has assembled these people together at his uh, mansion for the weekend because he believes that one of them is a werewolf and he's going to kill them before the weekend is over because he's a trophy hunter and he's always a hunter, whether it be in the boardroom or, you know, in the wherever he's hunting stuff. The uh, he, he's like, this is a, the, he wants a, like a werewolf head on his wall is that what he's shooting for it's the most dangerous game uh i do love this idea though that he wants to that he he's tracked these first is the background is is that he's tracked these people he he's um followed them and they all have backgrounds in some sort of eating of human flesh whether some crime they did some accident supposedly happened or some uh, uh weird thing that they've tried but um, they've all got that background. So he's gathering there. And he's like, well, one of you must be a werewolf. Which, you know, I see how you connect those dots. So who are but these like suspects? This- who do we got here? And what are they? What do they? What do they do? Who's our who's our suspect suspect list? We got Peter Cushing, who is uh, uh, an academic on werewolves at this point. He explains how chemically and scientifically how uh, being infected by a werewolf happens and what the change is. Which makes him a suspect because he knows a lot about werewolves? I guess. Because he spent his life researching werewolves, right? He has the yeah, mythology, so which we'll done, have to go into. And so he's done certain things that involve the consumption of human flesh. I don't think he did. He never actually said. I think, no? only, I think only one person uh, was explicitly, this is Paul Foote, the painter, right? <laughs> who, he was a medical student who uh, apparently may have uh you know, he said basically he took a dare or something and he ate a piece of somebody in medical school <laughs> but then wasn't there like another crime that happened somewhere or he painted Four a months. victim uh in somewhere where he was living where it was like you know the person was part partially eaten um so there's paul foot there's the doctor played by cushing who else we got davina who is she? The, the, the I don't know the haunted woman. I don't know. She's kind of white lady. Crazy, yeah. The crazy white lady. It's Karen. Oh, haunted woman. She's kind of haunted. Who's uh, the significant other of Michael Gambon? Is that who she is? Yeah, I'm not sure. They have some kind of what relationship. relationship well, Michael Gambon is a uh, who. Uh, well, I mean, do we know? Everybody knows he's Dumbledore now, right? I mean, that's uh, right. he became famous. He took over for Richard Dumbledore. Yeah, second and not the best. The yeah. second and worst. Let's just and say worst. Yes, we'll say worst. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Jude Law in Fantastic Beasts is probably better than Michael Gambon. So I'm going to say he's the worst. Oh yeah, there is a turn. Yeah, he's the worst. Hmm. But we all loved him in Sleepy Hollow. Am I right? In Sleepy Hollow, yes. was Layer Cake. Everyone. Yeah, and Boys. Uh, Gosford Park. Yeah. Um. So he. Oh yes. He is a. Uh, well, that's another closed room mystery uh you know in a big house yeah. kind of thing um so he's a uh was he a violinist who every city that he goes to it seems like there's these murders that happen uh where the victim's throats are torn out yeah um davina is i'm not sure she every party she goes to someone seems to die if you go for a weekend party with davina someone you ends die. up dead um who else Ooh, we got? die with davina there you go there we go copyright 2020 saturday night freak show i don't oh, know why we sure. may were, use that uh, were weekend parties a bigger deal in the 70s that that kept happening i think so i think that again drugs parties this is what ruined it all <laughs> are they are they rich is it because we're not rich that we don't understand like the weekend party because we don't have a guest house that's what your problem is you don't have a <laughs> because guest house. we don't have cocaine no, it was yeah. just you'd bring. I think like this. If uh, you have a mansion, you fill it with people. Yeah, right? that True, was. Right? A, yeah. I think like the this is a maybe it's a more of an English thing. The idea that you know you have the you're rich and you have the big mansion and so you have you know hunting parties or something where you loose the dogs and you go out and you hunt the quail or whatever like during the weekend 
and everybody comes over and you got the staff, you know, for it. In the and, 70s? Uh, no, earlier than that, but I think it was yeah. still, this is like the, the trail into that tra- tradition. I was saying, is this fucking Downton Abbey? Like, yeah. I think they stopped doing this, didn't they? Is this still a thing? I, I don't, don't know. I'm not a whole lot of money. I don't know. Please do come over for the fox hunt. It's on Holly, think of Tuesday. Holly, think of it as like how still people happen. that live in Manhattan have like a house in the Hamptons and on the weekend they'll go to the Hamptons and have like a party and invite True. everyone. That's Actually, I know it happened in the yeah, 70s. It's like, what about Bob? I saw Damien Omen yeah. 3. It happened in that. That was in the 70s. Boom! Movies prove my point. Oh, to be rude. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there you go. Get the guest house. The people will come. Um, so who else? Who else is our uh, uh, suspects here? Um, the guy you were talking about. Bennington? The guy, Jan? No, Jan was uh, Michael Gambon. So we also had Bennington. Bennington is Charles Gray, right? From yeah, uh, and he, what made him a suspect? I forget. He was. Um, I was just I watching him, all. like real close. And every time they had a test for uh, to see who was a werewolf, he was drinking like profusely. Like he took a big yeah. drink before he grabbed the candlestick. The way he grabbed yeah, the candlestick was- felt. Like he was covering his hand to grab yeah, it. Yeah, he was. I felt like he was the first one that they wanted you to think it was him. I think so because he yeah. was very suspicious. There was also a point I think uh, where there's one scene where he had a silver cup, a silver. You know, and he was drinking out of that, mm-hmm. and, and he, he had, slammed it down. Yeah. No, well, then there was another one where he like went to go touch it and then stopped, and they took it away. Yeah, yeah and it was like, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Was like, watching that one. Yeah, and then Caroline uh, Newcliff's wife. Is there also? See, then we've the, got the fact that they were doing all that. That was I instantly was like, all right, it's not him. They're making it too obvious. It's not this guy. I was like, damn. I was just like, come on, come on. But weren't they <laughs> making Paul Foot becomes basically the prime suspect? I think because he's a because bearded, he long like haired guy with a lot of hair on him. Yeah, he's the I love it guy. when uh, when uh, uh, what's his name, Calvin Lockhart. <laughs> he's like everyone but Paul Foot, and then he runs out the door to go find Paul Foot. It's a great name to yell. Yeah. Where's Foot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got a great voice. Uh, he does. He's just, he's all great. Yeah. His he reminded eyes. me, he reminded me of uh, William Marshall who played Black Yellow. I don't It could have been yeah. because of the widow's peak also. Oh, and the booming I, I voice. Was, I think it was mainly the hair. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, I think that's the suspect list, right? And then basically, then he entertains them. With, oh, and he's also got his uh, the security oh, yeah, his expert dude. who has installed yeah. all of this stuff and is in some kind of secret room with the panel of uh, television monitors and the blinking This is the other reason why he's called him a Bond villain. <laughs> yeah, it really does feel like a Bond villain's lair. Those yeah, Bond movies, bit, yeah. I tell you, they it changed the movies and uh, inspired so much. <laughs> Even just the, the inspiration cool. for Blinking Light Science. Did that come from Bond movies? Maybe. <laughs> or like, uh, yeah, maybe. Or J- I, Japanese that may come from like Godzilla. Or yeah, old 50s or whatever, 40s. Once we got into science fiction, you always had the Blinking mm-hmm. Light Science panels. Um so he, uh, so New Cliff basically tells everybody that this is what he's going to do. Everybody, of course, I mean, how you would react is like, well, this is fucking ridiculous. I would be scared for my life if I've got a <laughs> host who says one of you is a werewolf. And his, yeah. the intention here is that he's going to kill one of you before the weekend is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen enough in this day and age to know that people are crazy. So if I got stuck on a uh, in a mansion in the middle of nowhere and some dude was like, yeah, one of y'all's a werewolf and I'm going to kill you. I'd be terrified. Right. But see, this is, I guess that's how I was kind of watching this movie because he does, like, he's kind of cool at the beginning, but as it goes on and as his world starts to fray, like, he starts getting more, uh, you know, like, loose and you know, it's like, right? oh my god, like, you are trapped here on this island with a raving fucking lunatic <laughs> you know but of course we and, know and they're, there's right, a and they're all out just playing croquet and being fine with it mm-hmm. waking mm-hmm. up the next morning and having some tea because that's what civilized do. people do they have tea in the morning it doesn't matter if two right. people are dead I nope, kind of wish matter. they would have been a little snootier though you know <laughs> they weren't like, snooty enough no I kind of wish they would have been a, like a little over the top with it you know like they were getting there with with doing the tea while people were dying. But, like, I don't know. I think if you remade this movie, it would be even more ridiculous than that, you know? Yeah. 
Is this movie I mean, ripe for a remake? Absolutely. Uh, only oh, yeah. only yeah. if Donald Glover is a star. <laughs> but think and about it. Okay, I I think bottle episode kind of movies like this are perfect for uh, remaking because you get like 10 or 12 stars and it's really low budget as far as location and effects and all those other things. It's a, it's a Knives Out situation. Exactly. I was going to say, we just did this with Knives Out and it was very successful. People it's, love yes. this shit. Yeah, yeah I, I honestly feel like we should be remaking 12 Angry Men every five years with famous people. I think so, too, because, that, yeah, we all know the material, but to see the different actors doing it would be great. Exactly. Why are we not making that movie more often? <laughs> 12 Angry Men. That's why we're making the new Hamlet. Yeah. It's it the new should Hamlet. be, yeah. because it's um, Oscar bait, yeah. too. Everyone yeah. gets their moment to, like, you yeah. know, you know, pontificate and, you know, be whatever they want to be. It's for sure. Is that why we're getting a new uh, Kenneth Branagh movie? That's a um, sequel, though, to Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile. He's just doing another yeah, Agatha Christie, yeah, because yeah. he wants to be Poirot. Poirot again. Poirot. His Poirot. Yeah. That's what I'd say. You're going to remake 12 Angry Men, but one of them is a vampire. Which one? New Cliff basically figures out that what he's going to do is he's going to have these, like, uh, dinner table games to try and figure out who is the werewolf. Right. So his first idea is that a werewolf is going to be allergic to silver. And so he's going to pass a candlestick around to all the people. Uh, Peter Cushing or Cushing, his whole thing in this scene is to uh, explain the mythology of the werewolf in scientific terms. Was there anything here that stood out to you as different from um, conventional werewolf lore? I don't recall what he said. <laughs> yeah, the um, oh, what did he say that was sounded different? Um, that it's more of a disease that infects them. He, he did go over something different that I the liked. Lymph, the yeah. lymph glands or whatever, some, oh, something like that. Yeah, it's a gland, yeah. glandular thing, and he put some like real science behind the explanation. <laughs> but even if it real made, like science. focused, well, no, no. What I'm saying is like <laughs> even if it sounds horrible, because Peter Cushing is saying it. So, matter-of-factly, in his British accent, it sounds real good. Yeah, I think tonight, he, we're going to talk about the real science, werewolf science. There you go. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real I believed it. <laughs> this I is was Unsolved Mysteries. That, <laughs> that, Werewolves 101, I am in that class to have our Professor Cushing uh, explain it to us. I, I don't remember. Did he touch on it all, like, if it's able to be transferred between people? Because that's always a big point of contention yeah that Talked became about like blood a, contamination yeah that was a big plot point for the end of the uh movie that it could be passed on uh, once it, someone to because well <clears throat> well what i'm trying to uh, <laughs> don't we, spoil yeah, it yeah, okay 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 well wait but we got to remember that point like how does somebody become a world um yeah he uh I don't think he's doing an English about. accent. He's not doing his natural English accent. He's got like a I German accent Irish. or something. No, it was I something like, because uh, there was a lot of Furscht and Wurscht. You know, I was like, what the fuck so are you doing? So he's the chef? Yeah. Is what you're saying? Well, then maybe he was supposed to be Swedish. Well, his name was, I was like, his name was Dr. Lundgren. So there you go. Was he, was yeah. he Swedish? So he's Swedish. Yeah. yeah. Peter Cushing, yeah. actor. There you go. You didn't even notice that he had a fake accent. He's so good at selling it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he uh so basically they pass this candlestick around and so then this is where we're paying attention it's like who touches the candlestick because peter cushing says minute particles of the silver are absorbed through the skin and will prove fatal to a werewolf does did i mean were you watching this were there any suspects developed at the candlestick scene yeah, because you didn't see Caroline touch it. See, so, yeah, I was I was dead set on the one guy at this point, so I didn't even pay attention to Caroline. Oh, I was. I was like, mm, Caroline, they <laughs> touching it at all during that scene. <laughs> well, it's okay, because uh, we get to see this No one again. thought to be like, what if it's not actual silver? <laughs> yeah. Well, they I come thought up, that was going to happen. They come up with a whole bunch of stuff. Like, later on, Cushing is saying that, like, well, in today's day and age, you could somebody could have, like, a, you know... Like glue, basically, on their hands to protect them from, you know. Um, they do the the, the 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 candlestick trick again as the movie goes on because uh, apparently a candlestick alone, the silver, is not good enough. Who knew this? You also have to yeah. have pollinating wolf's bane in the air in order to trigger the reaction 
that will uh, Allergy. prove poisonous to the werewolf. I know this is yeah. A- this is part of the Cushing science that I lo- that I thought was kind of cool. Something he expanded on, which is like, no, all these elements must come together in order for this to happen. Yeah, and so of course, Newcliff has a hot house out back where he is. But even though the thing doesn't <laughs> grow in Great Britain, he has a stash of wolfsbane. When he goes out go. to get it, somebody's out there and throws an axe at him. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Well. He's nearly killed, so that means someone is definitely... So that means groovy their... chase scene is what that means. <laughs> With the music, you're saying? Yes. Yeah, the, the soundtrack. We haven't talked about the music of this movie yet. Yeah. Tell so us about is, the music of the movie. It is funkadelic. <laughs> it, is, it is groovy, funky, uh, Dracula 1972. It's awesome. It does not quit. Yeah. No. <laughs> Even when you want it to. I didn't want it. Oh, I never wanted it to. <laughs> bam, 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 yeah, it's all, yeah. Uh, there was no karate in this movie. That's what it was missing. You're right. It's a karate vibe. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We need it because he's actually Shit. in like, yeah, he seems like he would be a judo or karate master right. in yeah. that getup. He get does up. seem like he would, he would have, like obsess over that sort of thing. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. You're right. That's a missed opportunity. They, um. The all the cast uh, do things that basically incriminate them. Well, Peter Cushing never er, incriminates himself. There's nothing that he, he uh, does. There's one thing: the bullet. I thought when he goes to clean the bullet before putting it in his mouth. Oh, they did the old he, switcheroo. He did the old switcheroo. Whether he, but I, they, that was one they did on purpose to make you think because he shined it too long and folded the thing around and pulled out a new bullet. So I think he actually did the switcheroo. But you were supposed to see it. For those who haven't seen the movie, what are you talking about? He, he uh, uh, they do another test um, uh, because they figure. <laughs> what was the line? Somebody said this. That was a great line. No oh, one it, can, uh, it was a uh, when it was when uh, he gives the bullet to Carolyn, and she's like, "Oh, is it time for my pill?" <laughs> right. Well, also I love that line. <laughs> yeah, but also like no, no werewolf can varnish its mouth or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Which you I mean, thought was oh, a yeah. great line. <laughs> Too, can't yeah. varnish the inside of his mouth so yes, he, yeah he gets a silver bullet to hand around <laughs> okay but in that in the second candlestick scene he goes around and i think he's still toying with them at this point he's like well you know because he's like the the first night a werewolf does get out and we see you know it's one of those scenes where like all this the lights on the big board that the security guy has is like you know uh and then he's directing them like you know he's going he's going due north and then like he stopped it's turning around. It's coming directly at you. It should be 80 yards away. It's closing, closing, you know. And then yes. this dog uh, j- jumps over New Cliff, and we're like, oh, it's, it's a dog. There's some great dog action scenes in this part. <laughs> As like, it, the shot composition's fun. Well, because you can't really see it. It's shot at night or something. It's right, a black but it's being, dog going, but it's, <laughs> Yeah, but it's being shot with, the, with that music. And, and uh, again, we're running around like we're, you know, in a, in a groovy spy movie. Yeah. But uh, it kills the. It comes back and actually kills the uh, security guy. Comes in through the skylight. He shoots at it's it, dope. and it's still there. He jumps in. The werewolf jumps in, and when New Cliff comes back and finds him, guy is missing an eyeball. This is the only like mm-hmm. scene of gore. Is this movie PG? I think it is. I think so. I loved that the werewolf was staring him down through the skylight. And then the guy took a couple shots and he's like, all right, I'm going to come in now and just jumps through the skylight. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think he even like stared him down a little bit more before he jumped in. He's mm-hmm. like, ha Yeah. <laughs> well, he stared him down. He took the shots. Then he was there again. Yeah. You know, looking through him at the skylight and he jumped in. When New Cliff comes into this room, it is fucking trash. Like this is a werewolf who has pulled all the panels out, eaten all the wiring, smashed all the televisions. It's a, a slaughterhouse for electronics. It's amazing. <laughs> who knew that a dog and animal could do this? This werewolf, this is also uh, part of this lore, right? Like the full moon comes up and everybody's like going for strolls in the garden as the new cliff is watching <laughs> yeah. them. Uh, nobody transforms by the, the full moon itself. Uh, the werewolf apparently is able to transform at will because everybody's in the house uh, after the event, after New Cliff comes back and like, where, where were you? Where's foot? You know, everyone's there. So that means the yeah. werewolf can come back and sneak into bed as a human and then wake up and go like, well, I don't know. I, I heard it something yeah. on the stairs. He's like having he's got Hulk powers. He's like he's always a werewolf. 
That's Which technically makes them a skinwalker, not a werewolf. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Some highfalutin talk there, Michaela. Yeah, a skinwalker <laughs> can change at will. Werewolf can't. It's much sadder to be an actual werewolf because you have no control over it. There you go. That's right. The Lou Garou. The Lycanthrope. Mm-hmm. The, I don't know, there's like a hundred fucking names for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we went through, I think on one of our past episodes, of the, the vampire names. <laughs> Werewolves also have like a, a thousand um the uh i was watching the, the there is a certain member of the cast we'll say who uh his behavior like pretty much like if you're keyed into he's a werewolf he is you know trying to get out of there at first you know it's like whoa this guy's hunting a werewolf i'm leaving uh then he's like volunteering like i'll stay and you know the other he <laughs> just let everybody else go who are you trying right. to protect uh, he doesn't touch the candlestick because of just the luck of the draw, the way that it's being passed around that second time when the air is pollinating because something else happens that distracts Newcliff, and so he's not able to touch it. Um, his uh, explanations for where he was at any given time are like, well, then I came back, and then I heard someone come in before. You know, I mean, he's playing yes. it like he's the werewolf. Um, That's true. But um, the... Uh, at the, the the werewolf break happens, right? And so basically they stop the movie and they're like, okay, who do you think it is? Which basically this means that, you know, the, the uh, like a clock appears on the screen and they actually do like a tick down and you're like, who are these people? We know that it's not Charles Gray because he gets killed by the werewolf, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we know, was there somebody else his, who we know that it's his not? Dude, his, his dude, dude is dead. Yeah, the, the security dude is dead. Yep. Um, all of the uh, the movie is trying to guide you toward Paul Foot because he also tries to escape and gets electrified yeah. by the fence and then gets corralled back at gunpoint. Um, I feel like escaping should not be a direction of who did it. I, everyone should be trying to escape at this point. Yeah, yeah. a sane person. <laughs> yeah. would be out trapped yeah. on an island with yeah. a crazy man with a guy yeah. who believes in werewolves and thinks it might be me. <laughs> um Oh, this would be so good to redo this. Yeah. Well, there you go. You got to start yeah. writing the uh, the remake. So uh-huh. the werewolf turns out to be, after the werewolf break, it is revealed as they go around. So he he gives everybody a silver bullet, and they have to, uh, to put it in their mouth. And everybody goes around, although, again, uh, one person in that chain is at the very end and doesn't. we don't get there. But he gives it to Caroline, his wife. And she has a reaction and actually turns into a werewolf, like right there in front of him. Turns into a werewolf might be generous. We see her uh, hand is all furry. Her hand is furry. Do her eyes do something? Nope. I feel like her eyes do something. No? Is nope. that all? I'm just seeing things. No, but her hand is furry. Yeah, but I like that you remember it better and more extravagant than it actually was. Uh, <laughs> and then, boom, there's a big dog sitting there on the couch with everybody. And they all, Whoa! and I uh, shoot her dead. Yep. And then we go... Now, he was a, a little crazy before this point. Like, he was teetering on the edge, and now he said to kill his wife. Yeah. But how is it so possible, we ask ourselves, and he asks the question, because she was with me in the barn when the werewolf attacked us. Mm-hmm. And this becomes that thing we were talking about, about the transmission of werewolfry and how you become a werewolf. Do you remember how this occurred? She had a werewolf cut on her ring. hand. Yeah. She had a cut on her hand, and when the werewolf attacked the dog, the blood got in her open wound. Boom. Yeah. There it is. Right, right. She was petting it as well. Right. Because the dog gets attacked, and there's like a helicopter comes down, and it explodes. I mean, you got to do this in a movie. Like, yeah, you that was, think we were talking oh, yeah, about that was wonderful. helicopters explode. He but. was shooting at that poor man hugging that dog. Yeah. It was so sad. This is a movie where, like, from the air, I think he gets a Gatling gun, right? Or no, he's got like a he's pumping a machine the, gun. Yeah, he's pumping that uh, greenhouse full of lead, trying yeah. to <laughs> kill a werewolf. Uh, I like that you still describe items in sound. That's the best. I think it takes it to another level. You have to do it. You have to. Whatever there's a machine gun involved, you got to have the sound effect to go with it. Um, so yeah, it turns out that Caroline became infected when she was uh, when she was uh, petting the d- the dog with the wound. 
Yeah. So he killed his wife, and then we're like, oh my god, so that means there's another werewolf. So you're basically saying that none of you guys guessed that it was, or Michaela says she did. She guessed that it was Michael Gambon. No, I guess it was Caroline. I didn't guess that it was Michael. Yeah, I knew that it yeah. was second. I knew it was Caroline, and I knew there was a second one, but I didn't guess who it was. Okay. I had no idea. I know, because <laughs> Sean was... <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh my, it's Caroline. It's Cushing. It's still Cushing. <laughs> like, nope. Wait, it's Cushing too. <laughs> ah, I, think, yeah. I was, I was I think, wrong on everything. I think my absolute favorite part of our group chat was when Michaela's like, oh, I'm, I'm a few minutes behind you guys. And Sean's like, nothing I've said has mattered. <laughs> right? It's still all up in the air. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was kind of hoping that you'd be plugging in your guesses there at, the, at that moment. But um, yeah, I mean, the movie works to basically try and throw you off like any mystery does. Uh, it turns out it is Michael Gambon. He's been the werewolf the whole time, and Newcliff has to chase him down and finally kill him. Uh, we get like a, a brief reverse transformation scene when the thing's dead, which is that old timey version of uh, the lap dissolve as we watch the makeup fade away from uh, Michael Gambon. Can we first talk about the amazing fight that happens between these two? That changes locations between cuts. <laughs> this is the greatest fight ever. They're in the middle of the dense woods. Then they're on a, in the middle of a like a barren field. Like I don't understand how this fight happened. Yeah, it was great. The 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 it's either daytime or it's nighttime. It's day. It's night. There's trees. There's nothing for miles. It yeah. is wonderful. I thought in one of those brief cuts, I saw the uh, <laughs> the dog costume maybe ripped. You know down what the it was probably. Like, it was <laughs> like, like it. It was like in Family Guy when Peter has those long fight scenes with the chicken. Yeah, that's it was. Kind of, that's what it was like. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a sight to behold, listener. You have to check this out as it because uh, the overhead angles are clearly like on a, a country road, but the close ups are in a wood in the woods. Yeah. But he kills him. He bags his prey. Uh, only Davina. And uh, Dr. Um, what was it? Dr. L- Lundgren? Lundgren. Dr. Lundgren. Lundgren are still alive. Everybody else is, because uh, Caroline was turned into a werewolf and was killed. Paul Foote uh, was killed by the wolf. Uh, Charles Gray is killed by the wolf. I mean, everybody's off the list. Uh, but it turns out um, when uh, New Cliff comes walking back, and I kind of did like this, is it was basically a, uh, a mirror of the opening scene. Right, mm. uh, he was coming back out of the woods toward the house where the. But he's in white were. this time. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was intentional, I assume. <laughs> yeah, uh, they knew what they were doing. He's in black before. He's in white now. Yeah. Yep. We're mirroring the uh, the opening with a little bit of symmetry it rhymes. Right. He comes back, and it turns out, lo and behold, he has been bitten by the werewolf and so they don't actually say it because it would have been too on the nose that it was a nietzsche quote that he who fights with monsters should take care that he does not become one himself yeah clearly what has happened to newcliff and he has become a werewolf so we get the old scene of uh him going into the study with the the rifle so yes. take care of business <laughs> and the bang Shoots himself in the head. Yeah, there we go. Bam. And then the movie's <laughs> over. I know we could have left Credits. it vague, but let's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spell it out for us, Sean. <laughs> uh, he shot himself. There you go. In I the face. He uh, ends. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how uh, successful this movie was, to tell you the truth, back in the day. Uh, I only knew of it because, it was, you know, like, I, I remember that poster. I remember the fact that it had a, you know, it was advertised with a werewolf break. Uh, so that was always <laughs> like, what? I got to see this. It was released somewhere as Black Werewolf. <laughs> okay. That and, sounds like a black exploitation movie. Well, because I think that's well, what I they mean, were trying to sell it as. Yeah. So maybe in America a, or something, but I'll on video, there's always Beast Must Die. I'll bet Black Werewolf has a dubbing of the main character <laughs> to be more exploitation. I think it's the same movie. Well, um, the only other. Yeah, so I was looking up like what some of these other people did. Um, well, we saw it talking about Michael Gambon and Charles Gray. Anton Differing, he played the security guy. He was in uh, Where Eagles Dare. Anybody? Nope. He was in Fahrenheit 451. 
He was in a a hammer pilot for a TV show that never got made in like the fifties called tales of Frankenstein. Um, Mm, no, the woman who played, uh, Caroline, I think it was, was it Martha Clark or something? I can't remember what her uh, first name is, but she, uh, the year before was in uh, a movie that is regarded as like a fairly sizable classic in the, uh, well, I guess, black exploitation of, of black horror cinema called Ganja and Hess, and she played Ganja in that movie. Yeah. That was remade by Spike Lee as, uh, this, what was it, The Sweet Blood of the, the Jesus? Sweet Blood of the Jesus a couple years ago? Yeah. They remade it. It's a vampire movie. Uh, so there you go. Marlene Clark, I think her name is. Um, okay. So there you go. Bam. And then Amicus folded, and that was The Beast Must Die. So uh, I tell you what, listener. We are going to go around the room and tell you whether or not we liked The Beast Must Die, whether or not you should watch it. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to help us with that task, we're going to have to call on our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got his little wolf costume on. No clipping main extensions. Yeah. That's a, that is a Chewbacca onesie. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is not a wolf costume. Those are just his jammy jams. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to bed. That's it. Why did the, for some reason, like in my mind, when I see this werewolf, uh, you know, the dog's face, uh, it, I imagine it has like a giant sunflower uh, you know, wrapped <laughs> yeah. around its head. That's One how it sunflower. fits. Right. That's because you see those like people who put their dogs and cats in costumes. They got that giant uh, lion mane and shit. So yeah, it kind of feels like it's a sunflower. If you guys were making a werewolf movie and you could only cast a dog, what breed of dog would you use as the werewolf? Husky. I would get like a wolf dog hybrid, probably. Yeah. One that looks wiener. closest to a wolf, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wien- wiener dog. <laughs> get out of here. But not a German <laughs> shepherd. <laughs> I don't no, know why. Like, it's obviously a dog. Yeah. yeah. If you get like a, like a something similar to a husky, like a wolf mix, like Michaela said, it yeah. looks so close to a wolf. Yeah. Are German or not shepherds a, like not easy a to train? Are German yeah, shepherds they, easy to train? They just look like dogs, though. So yeah. it's like. Yeah. It and they're, I mean, they're German. They're great at following orders. Uh, this one's dyed <laughs> black or whatever. But uh, yeah, I know. I think. Uh, did you ever see. So Alice Cooper was in a movie called Monster Dog, which was a werewolf movie, where also, it was an Italian movie, they used uh, German Shepherds. I'm like, why German Shepherds for werewolves? I don't know what's going on. I, I'm Stop talking about my about pick for next week, Colin. <laughs> okay, I might have to put this on my list. <laughs> yeah. Why are you talking about my pick? Yeah. Monster Dog. There you go. Did, you guys didn't know about that movie? No. 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 That was when no. Alex Cooper, so he was like, when he was hitting the lows before uh, Friday the 13th, you know, and Poison... And, you know, trash or whatever. He did some shit. So, Colin, Colin, <laughs> if you are the one who has told us about the Alice Cooper werewolf movie, we have not heard of it. <laughs> well, there you go. Alice Cooper werewolf movie. Is Alice Cooper the werewolf? I'll never tell. You'll have to watch. Monster okay, Dog. let me ask. Is there an actual werewolf in that movie? Uh, well, I mean, it's played by German shepherds, but there's supposed okay. to be an actual werewolf. Um... So, first of all, we should tell you at home how you can join the fun and join the Freak Show family. We'll read your comments on the air. You can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. And Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram for the time of your life. Peter Gatt writes in about the Beast Must Die and says, I saw this again recently. I think you'll have fun watching it. I'd like to know how I would like to know if any of you correctly guessed who it was. I think I get like half credit. Yeah, you got one right. You get half credit. (laughs) Holly gets 75. 75%, yeah. Yeah. All aiming toward Caroline. I got, they took points away from me. (laughs) Sean got negative. Negative points. It's the old dude. It's Cushing. (laughs) It's one of the old dudes, I promise. Well, Robin Linneman Silverberg wrote in and said, I always loved the werewolf break. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michael Whitaker said, Grand Moff Tarkin looks pissed in this movie. I've never seen it, and I'll have to find it and check it out. I hope in true British horror fashion, the blood looks like red house paint. I 
think he, I think he looks as calm as usual, actually. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, the 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 publicity stills use that shot of Cushing uh, with the uh, shotgun. You know, oh, oh gotcha. Yeah. Okay. To make it look okay. like he's the star of the movie, but he's actually just a supporting character in this. Yeah. Uh, he's got a pretty small part, really. Yeah. And uh, Michael, you'll be uh, pleased to know that in the one brief scene where there is blood, it does look like red house paint, and that is called Kensington Gore. Is the official brand name? I don't know if it's a, the unofficial brand name of the red blood recipe that was used in British horror movies. Kensington wow. Gore. Yeah, that's great. Um, Stephen. I like to think the guy's name was just Gore because. Yeah, well, Ken, I think Kensington Gore actually is a place. Okay. But Kensington's they, a neighborhood, a very, very rich neighborhood in London. So maybe they did add the gore. It was made in Kensington. I don't know. Now we're going to have to look into the, where that came from. Uh, yes, Stephen Lepitak says he bought this a few weeks ago, and it's been an absolute delight. Um, nice. I bought it a few weeks ago, too. Bam! Vinegar Syndrome. <laughs> put it out. Uh, right? No, Severin. Sorry, Severin Films. Severin. That's right. If we want our sponsorships, we got to get the companies right. I mean, come on. Last week's movie, we watched Phantoms. Uh, sorry about the audio gremlins in that episode. Um, Simon Carter writes in and says, I should really watch this movie. I've just never gotten around to it. At least I can see if it's freak show approved before I invest my time. That you should. And was it? Yeah, listen to the episode. I'm not going to give it to, away. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> Salesmanship right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll have to listen to the episode. To find out. <laughs> uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, Holly and Michaela, you the bomb in the freak show, yo. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We got a meme. <laughs> I love it. Did we make okay. that a background photo? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I'm glad somebody used the yo, the bomb joke in, in a mailbag because I was really waiting for someone to say, yo, Peter Cushing is the bomb in this <laughs> movie. In the so I'm style. glad somebody got to it. There you go. Uh, about the previous week's episode was a movie called Uninvited. Nick, Nick Siebel said, wow, I just watched Uninvited. Cancel my fucking invitation. Fuck that party. Fuck that movie. That movie is so bad. Bring a killer cat movie to the table. I raise you a killer rat movie called Of Unknown Origin, starring Robocop, Peter Weller, and Shannon Tweed, and directed by George P. Cosmatos, who did Cobra and First Blood, or Rambo and Tombstone. That's a freak show movie. It's on the it. list. It's on the list. It. Hell yeah, I know why I watch this. It sounds awesome. <laughs> Um, on the list. <laughs> Owen Johnson writes in and says, I was hoping for another Spookies or Tammy and the T-Rex religious experience again. Well, it ain't up there at that level, but it still manages to be hilarious. The climax with the cat coming back again and again was golden. I laughed so hard at how comedic it looked, and the freeze frame at the end before the end credits was the icing on the cake. The movie was something else. <laughs> that ending was like seriously one of my favorite. That might be my favorite freeze frame ending ever. <laughs> Yeah, well, you were enjoying the same things that we were, Owen. I mean, that, was, <laughs> that movie was something else. I would put it up there with Tammy and the T-Rex, honestly. I would, too. Honestly, I, I it, yeah, yeah. I Freak so. show follow-up. Sean, did you order your copy? <laughs> no. Okay. I don't not, that I would, not that I would tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know unless you just come over and spy a copy I was like, show. no, we're going to hear Amazon Prime come by any minute now and drop it off. <laughs> Hope nope. springs eternal. Uh, John, it's, it's they always linger in my head for a while, and I'm like, ah, fuck it. That's why they have a watch, a uh, wish list. Jonathan Holt writes in and says, "There's nothing like watching a killer cat movie with your cat, who might secretly want to kill you if not for feeding and sheltering him." Uh, he sent a picture of his cat. You'll have to uh, check on our Ooh. Facebook. He said his name is Tennant after Doctor Who actor David Tennant, and he is more of a rom com kind of guy. Assuming <laughs> that means he didn't really care for uninvited. I mean, Holly, didn't you say, is this going to be appropriate for my cat to watch when we started watching it? I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then a few weeks ago, I'm not sure if that was the fourth one back, we watched a movie called Dread, which is based on Judge Dread. Uh, Disaster Incarnate wrote in to say the original RoboCop is basically Judge Dread. In the making of documentary, when they get to talking about the look of RoboCop, the special effects guy's first attempt at making RoboCop starts with a bust of George, Judge Dredd and three to four major alterations before they get to the RoboCop look. And most of RoboCop's speech is Dredd's as well, calling perps creeps, etc., which has always been Dredd's thing. Go, bam. 
I think if you go back to our RoboCop 2 episode in my uh, final thoughts, I say just go watch Dread instead. Because RoboCop 2 has the drug Nuke that is very similar to slow-mo. And so I was like, just go watch Dread instead. Yeah, I feel like you did say that, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thank you all very much for writing in. Again, you keep uh, Igor gainfully employed and keep the beatings at bay. And we know the mail delivery service is taking a beating these days, so thank you for keeping Igor. (laughs) Hell yeah. That's right. Uh, So now we're going to go around the room and tell you what we each thought of tonight's movie, The Beast Must Die, starting with... Sean! Okay, Uh, here we go. (laughs) Uh, uh, I thought this movie was a hoot. Um... I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I love uh, uh, what's his name? Calvin Lockhart. Yeah, he's great. I think he is playing it so straight that he's shaking with energy in this movie, and I I, I love it. I love the way he delivers uh, everything in this movie. Um, the cast is pretty good. Um, some of them just really aren't doing much. I don't think they need to. Davina and uh, I think there's one other character. Um, Peter Cushing's doing good. I like that he's the authority on werewolves. Um, you know, you could listen to him read the phone book. Um, it's, and it's a fun movie. It's also just ridiculous. I love, uh, Lockhart running through the woods with that music going on. He was everywhere. He's ran all over his estate. Um, uh, I love just like the, the whole vibe of this thing. This is like pure seventies. Uh, and it kind of comes across pretty great. I'm disappointed that we didn't get a werewolf, but I think what we got kind of led to more enjoyment out of this movie because I'm not criticizing a werewolf. Um, we're dealing with a dog in a coat. And so that kind of adds to the ridiculousness of the movie, which I did like. Um, I had a fun time. I think you'll, you'll have a lot of enjoyment watching these people act in this movie. And it's everyone's, it's pretty funny. I had a good time watching it. So I'm going to recommend the beast must die. Michaela, what did you think of the beast must die? Uh, I'm going to, I mean, I love werewolf movies. I always have a soft spot for them. I don't technically don't know if this is a werewolf movie or not, but no. I and I really do hate that like there's a second monster ending. I really cannot say <laughs> enough how much I hate that in a movie. Like it's just and I understand when this movie was made, it wasn't as overused as it is now. But it it's just such a cheap ploy and it's so annoying and it just kind of like it's uh, it just it's always so pointless. It doesn't matter because we've only been dealing with the one monster this whole time anyways. But I will say the gimmick in this movie is unique and I like it. And I think the gimmick alone is enough of a reason to watch it. I It's like, fun. Yeah. Like we were saying before, it forces you to pay attention and it forces you to pay attention to things you might not normally pay attention to because you're trying to like pick up on the clues that the movie is going to obviously show you, but also what they're going to, the information they're going to hold back. Um, and so I think you should watch it just for the gimmick aspect of it, if nothing else. And the, the funky seventies music, watch it for that too. Yeah. So I, I'm going to recommend it. Holly. Um, um yeah, real quick, yeah. Well, I was going to say it engages you for a movie like this. Um, if they were to make a werewolf movie nowadays, this movie just actively engages what you'd already be doing. Because if you saw a trailer for a movie like this today, you'd be like, all right, which one's the werewolf? That's what we have to guess. If you're watching, if you're going to go watch a werewolf movie. So it just mm-hmm. actively goes after that part of it, which I think is pretty smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, Even the, wolf, a, the Wolfman remake did that too. There's a mm-hmm. second one. Oh God, I hate, I just hate that. <laughs> it's just, it's so lazy. It's just lazy screenwriting, you know? Anyways, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's thirds and fourths. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's funny. It's funny watching this movie because it gave me so much of what I wanted, but it didn't give me a werewolf, and it's supposed okay. to be a werewolf movie, which just kind you of know, baffles me. However, I I thought it was I thought it was so much fun. Um, when we were having our group chat. Um, you know, Sean, you mentioned that you would love a remake of this with Donald Glover. And I instantly was like, that's what this is. This is a Halloween episode of Community. That's exactly what this is. It's like a clue slash werewolf. Like, this is a Halloween episode of Community. But I think that's why I like it so much, because it's just this weird, like, mashup of things. And, um, yeah, I thought it was so much fun. It gave me so many things that I wanted. It gave me a cool, spooky mansion, which you know I love. It gave me funky 70s music. Again, you know I love. 
it gave me a really badass black man leading actor, which I loved so much. I, it was just, it was so much fun. I, I loved this movie so much. Um, yeah, I, I was surprised because I was, I always get nervous that it's going to be boring. It's not going to keep my attention. Um, but I, I, I agree with you that it, it, it forces you to pay attention, but however, but also like, it's just a fun movie. So you're paying attention anyway. So yeah, I liked this a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun. It definitely put me in the mood for some Halloween vibes. Like seriously. And Michaela, I think you mentioned that. Same. When, like at the opening credits, you're like Halloween vibes. It's like, yes, I love this. Yeah. I feel like I should be watching this like on like a stormy October night. Yes. You know? Yes. And I, I love the gimmick. I just thought it was so much fun. It was, yeah, it was a good time. I definitely recommend it for sure. Colin. Well, then we're, I guess we're going to be freak show approved on uh, The Beast Must Die. I mean, yeah, I, I really enjoy this movie. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, because it's it's fun. It's not, like, serious. It's a movie where some guy's trying to get a, you know, I'm going to kill a werewolf. <laughs> you know, I mean, right there. But what I appreciate about these movies of uh, this era, right, I mean, as opposed to some of the stuff that, you know, the more recent thing, I don't know, there's a there's an example. I just watched something the other night that, that's trying to be like a culty kind of movie and have fun uh, the way this did. But there's a sincerity to these movies. Like, I mean, these actors are good actors, right? Even though they're in a ridiculous movie, but they're still mm-hmm. like Lockhart's doing like, you know, he's going all the way. Cushing's, you know, doing his accent. So that's clearly he's like, I'm going to, you know, somehow... Uh, entertain myself while i'm uh making this movie but the other guy was what uh i think it's tom chad chad bond or whatever who plays paul foot like that guy i thought was maybe the guy who took the movie away you know as the the scenery chewer uh mm-hmm. for a lot of the scenes that he was in i mean everybody is you know <clears throat> universally good in the movie uh the plot kind of you know there's maybe it takes place over three days maybe you could do it over two days shorten it up a little bit you do get a couple of times when it seems like we're repeating the same scene how many times they're going to be in the garden having tea how many times they're going to be passing the candlestick around the the uh the dining room table um but i think it uh it escalates in a way w- w- through new cliff's character as he kind of starts losing his shit as he he goes on and that kind of makes you know gives the movie this uh uh, anxiety, you know, is like, well, either this guy's going to go off or like there's actually going to be some kind of werewolf attack. Um, but I think, yeah, the reason that we are talking about the movie at all is because one of the producers, and I'm not sure which one, if it was a Sabotsky or Rosenberg, <laughs> said, This movie's shit. Let's put a werewolf break in it, just like they did in that old 10 Little Indians movie. And so <laughs> then it does, like we were talking about, I mean, that is the thing that makes this movie because. Otherwise, it would just be, you know, you'd be watching it and be, you know, it's like, it's okay. But the fact that it tells you up front, pay attention. They trick you. They trick you into paying attention with extreme detail to this movie and trying to find clues where the filmmaker, I don't think, uh, was thinking that way, right? They were just mm-hmm. making like a straight ahead kind of mystery thing. And then it was like, no, no, no. Watch everything that, you know, like we intentionally <laughs> did it. Like they didn't intentionally set it up for that uh intense scrutiny uh um, brilliance yeah it is a brilliant gimmick it's like a william castle gimmick you know that we're gonna and that's what makes the movie so um i'm trying to think that anything, has there been anything recently that's done i mean freddie no but can you imagine you, you had to put 3d glasses on at the end of the movie or something but you know could you imagine this game getting remade by the guys who did ready or not yeah, yeah. that would yeah, be well, like I'm, that would yeah. be perfect that'd be dope yeah i mean the only thing is i think that if you were to make this now you would play up the com- you'd play up the comedy of the ridiculousness mm-hmm, of the sure. situation and i yes. think that's why i like th- this one because it's sincere i yeah. would i would love if they like amped up the ridiculousness and made it so that the dog was actually wearing like a fur coat like, you can see, like, the buttons, like a legit fur coat. It seems like I a think, Taika Waititi movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think they could do that, but then once you see, like, that revelation in the movie of a dog wearing a coat, that's when, like, the real werewolf comes in. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone thinks he's, a who's ever in charge is a crackpot to half of the movie. Yeah. And then, and so do you as the audience, and then the werewolf fucking comes in. I think that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. 
Well, there's, uh, obviously, it gives a lot of room for uh, exploration for you filmmakers out there who want to make a quick buck. You can remake. There's going to be rights yeah. available. And you can find the story, whatever the story was called, and there shall, there shall be no darkness, which is published in, like, Twisted Tales or Tantalizing Tales or Twisted Tales of Mr. Whatever. Uh, so go check that out. You should check out The Beast Must Die. It's Freak Show approved. All four of us signed off on it. So that means next yeah. week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by. John, what do we watch next week? Man, I am stuck between three. This is the first time oh this has happened God. in a while. Yikes. I know. Usually I'm, I'm scrounging for something to watch. I'm like, what do I feel like? Now there's three I want to do. Did we just add <sighs> Monster Dog to that list? Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> I think we're going to continue the animal route um yeah i think so we're gonna watch pet cemetery too oh, for- <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna round we're gonna finish off our entire pet cemetery uh uh it's not a trilogy at this point we've watched all of them we'll have watched i've never actually seen this i've never see? seen it either oh no Woo! See, oh, there well we there you go well then i guess you have to see it to see yeah to make <laughs> up your mind but pet cemetery two all right well we hope you'll join us that's going to be next week you can find us right here again please hit that subscribe or like button leave us a review hey we'll read your review on uh, on our show and until then ladies and germs the basement is going dark <laughs>